Hello beauties, welcome back to my channel. So we have the worst of beauty, worst of skincare and worst of makeup, okay? And this is the third and final installment of the worst in beauty. If you miss the first two, especially if you're shopping and you want to filter out the good and bad, please do not forget to miss these three parts because it's just going to help you. As much as they were good beauty products in 2020, and there were a lot, I hope you saw the best of series, uh, there were a lot of bad ones as well, okay? It just goes hand in hand. This is all very subjective, so this is my opinion, obviously. Oh, let's start because we've got some really questionable makeup and questionable skincare. Uh, while we start off the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Guys, in 2021, please do not be a silent watcher. Uh, my jaw and my presence out here on YouTube all depends on you. It's all up to you whether you want to see me sustain out here. The first one is Ruby's Organic Foundation. Now, I love that brand in general. Everything above them, the ethos of that brand is something that really resonates with me a lot. And I was really looking forward to this foundation because it was all about that clean makeup. First of all, the shade match uh, it's just not right and it comes across a little too orange for my liking and I'm, I've got a very warm undertone. For some reason it doesn't sit very well. It kind of like separates on my skin and I've got textured, I've got acne prone skin and it doesn't sit well on textured skin and right after that after a few hours this area of my face starts to look a little ashy gray. It kind of like splits all over the face and I just don't like the texture of this foundation. I don't like the tone of this foundation. Uh, you know, they probably could improve on that. They could make it a little more warmer. They could make it more neutral. They could make it more cool toned. But I know it takes a lot of infrastructure to come out with so many different shades. But I just feel, I think we have crossed that stage of just being happy with just five or 10 shades. We need a lot more, especially if you are a cosmetic company that is playing around with makeup. You have to be skin shade inclusive. You really have to be inclusive. But this foundation is a big no-no. The next foundation that I just did not like is from Rodin and Field, okay? Now Rodin and Field is a US based company. They make some stellar skincare products and they already are a cult favorite with many people. You must have heard of Rodin and Field. Uh, they also have a sister company called Proactive. They made a foundation that probably is light on the skin, uh, easily, you know, you can play around with. It's supposed to not break you out. It's supposed to be really good for sensitive skin. And it did not break me out, but it did not sit well either. First of all, it was like applying a very light tinted kind of a foundation and if you have acne prone skin or you've got acne scars you need something that's got a little coverage and it didn't sit very well and the color for a big cosmetic giant like Rodin and Field to come out with what probably six shades I think I'm not sure because when I got it they had only about five six shades and I had to mix four and five or something together to get that olive golden undertone and I, it shouldn't be that from a very big multinational company you know so that is my biggest disappointment about this foundation and they completely fizzled out with this launch for me so that is why it made to the list all right so the next one is an eyeshadow palette this is from just gold artist eyeshadow if you saw my best makeup of 2020 i had a few just gold cosmetics that i introduced to all of you not many are talking about just gold this is something that you can find at makeupempire.in i've got a discount code for you and it is such an underrated makeup brand that is really really affordable but their eyeshadow was a complete downer when you when you swatch it it's definitely got that shimmer uh, the mattes are okay but you know when you blend it it just doesn't blend that well it feels a bit too chalky shimmer is a bit too chunky for my liking okay it just sits there but for some reason it's not impactful it's a very meh eyeshadow palette you know not something to get excited about price for 1296 and if you see the palette itself it looks like a very nice party palette uh, there's a lot more shimmery glittery stuff out here and it's not well balanced with matte eyeshadows or transition colors so no guys no uh, this is not the kind of color palette that I would gravitate towards on a daily use so no definitely no okay so the next eyeshadow palette that made it to the worst list is from Lacme this is the Lacme absolute illuminating eyeshadow palette Oh, oh lord this is nearly a thousand rupees you know what i know 
noticed about Lakme eyeshadow palettes, they don't make the cut. Okay, there's not a single palette that I have tried uh, from the Lakme whenever I've gone to the store to pick things up. It's just very, very lackluster palettes. Okay, it doesn't pack a punch, which is really surprising because Lakme, when it comes to many of their products, their lipsticks are stellar. Um, you know, they are kajals and you know, there's so many stellar stuff. Even their eyeliners are great. I mean, there are much better palettes out there. You'd rather invest in pack cosmetics because they would definitely, you know, swatch better. There's pigmentation to it. It will blend well. It won't go chalky. I'm not saying that this is bad, but this is not great either, okay? And for 1000 rupees, if you're spending for an eyeshadow palette, you want it to perform pretty well, isn't it? You just don't want to settle just because of the brand's name. You don't want to be like, ah, oh, it's, it's nice. It's making my eyes giving me sunset eyeshadow look. You don't want all that. You just want something to, you want it to say, hey, I'm worth that 900 rupees you spent. And look at the sponge applicator brush that they've given. So cute. They're stuck in time, you know, like, uh, hello, 1992. Uh, not for a matte eyeshadow. So this unfortunately has come to the list again. Oh, and I don't know why I did this. It's only because of the review, you know. Damn you, YouTube. Now, I have some eye pencils that I want to talk about. And I hope you saw the best eye pencil video of mine of 2020. The first one is from Earth Rhythm. This is the all day smudge free cold pencil. Again, Earth Rhythm is all about providing you that clean makeup, uh, you know, products. But this eye pencil was such a downer. I was so excited because it's one of those uh, non retractable eye pencils, something that you need to sharpen. And when you swatch it on the back of your hand, it looks like it can work but when you put it on your waterline there is no intensity to it uh, you know you have to really hurt your waterline to get the color okay the color payoff over here the second one that came in the worst list and i made a whole separate video of this and that is from forest essential uh forest essential basically came out with their makeup as well okay for the first time they introduced their kajals as well as their lip tints i tried my level best to warm it up, to apply this. If you do not warm it up on the back of your hand, to get that color payoff is very difficult. Plus it smudges very easily. There is no color payoff to this, okay? It's like my, the kajal that my mom makes at home is a lot more intense than these ones. And this is not cheap. Forest Essential is not a cheap brand. So when I opened the black kajal pencil itself, if you saw the video, the entire stick came out of it. So very, very disappointed with that. Uh, and from what I thought it was just my case, but I got to know that a lot of you got broken eye pencils too. And the funniest part is that it's all sold out. But I got the new variant because after the entire review went up and people's reaction, they did reformulate their cudgels and they sent me a new one. So I definitely will be testing that one out because I just got that yesterday evening. No matter what beautiful sounding ingredients that they have in this, it just did not make the cut for me. Is it like the worst? No, it's not the worst eye pencils. I've had worse eye pencils, I feel. But for what Forest Essential stands for, I just feel there was so much they could have, you know, done with their makeup line and something fizzled out. Now, the next one is an eyeliner plus uh, eyebrow pen. And this is from Forever 52. This is the collaboration with Meenakshi Dutt. I was quite excited about this because she's a huge makeup artist. It's a huge collaboration. Um, and the felt tip of this, I'm talking about the eyebrow side, it's got like a fork and you can just, you know, draw those strokes, those um, hair strokes on your eyebrows because I've seen a lot of these Korean brands imitate the same thing or Indian brands have imitated the Korean one. Uh, first of all, the color is also not something that's working for me. And second of all, you know you have drawn something on your eyebrows, okay? So probably I could get away if I was doing videos for YouTube, Instagram, but in real life, you probably could see it on my eyebrows. And I've got thin eyebrows, okay? So this is not something that is friendly for thin eyebrows. This is okay, maybe you can cheat it when you have thicker eyebrows, but Still, it just did not work well. It did not sit well. I'm talking about the liquid is just too thin. Something about it is just not right. I did not enjoy it. And the same thing goes with the felt tip as well. Now the felt tip, I mean, it's so small that you probably can get your winged eyeliner, but it's not the best either. And these were not cheap, you guys. So I would not recommend these at all because you could pay a little more and get some really good, amazing 
uh, eyebrow pens out there, but this one really fizzled out, okay? So definitely a no. Hear me out, all right? When it comes to Huda Beauty Lifeliner, when I did my best eyeliner video, I did talk about the eyeliner part of this, okay? And the eyeliner over here in Huda Beauty is the most long-lasting pitch matte black eyeliner I have come across. It reminds me very much of, I'm talking intensity-wise of the Inglot. Even in my eyeliner video, I did say that if I was given a choice between Lifeliner and the balm, I would go for the balm. Though this is very, very long lasting, it is very difficult to remove. So you're tugging your eyes a lot when you're removing it. This is perfect for brides, okay? That really, that waterproof, you can ball your eyes out and it's still going to stay put. So probably, uh, you know, a lot of bridal makeup artists do enjoy the lifeliner, okay? But saying that, for what you're paying, you're getting too little. The second part is the next side of it is your Kajal pencil and the Kajal pencil broke. Okay, that's another thing that really pissed me off. Not that I used it, but as you can see, it has spread all over and it just broke. And it, it has no intensity. You've got better Kajal pencils that I have described in my top Kajal pencil. It is just not worth the money, okay? It's not worth the hype. And there's so many things about Huda Beauty that is actually not worth the money. But definitely no, if there was a full version of her eyeliner, I probably would still buy it because like I said, if I want something that has got that pitch black matte intensity that will last for a long time. For example, if I'm going for a function and there's so much of humidity out here, I don't want to look like a raccoon, then I wouldn't mind buying a full size of it. But I definitely don't want a two in one. And even if it's a two-in-one, make the kajal at least a little more intense now. There's no pigmentation, it breaks, and you're getting so little for what you're paying. What a rip-off. The next one to make it to the list is the metallic eyeshadow sticks from K-Beauty. Now, the matte eyeshadow sticks came in the best, and this had to come in the worst because it's not the best metallic eyeshadow, okay? I have a lot of metallic eyeshadows that... They do blend really well, just like the rest of them, but it does not sit very well. Uh, it kind of like moves about, which I really don't like. And as soon as you swatch this, like for example, if I swatch this, the pigmentation looks really intense. But the moment it goes all over the eyelids and you are blending it or you're playing around with it, it moves very badly and it does not have that same intensity that happens as soon as you swatch it. I probably would use this just on my waterline, but this is meant to be an eyeshadow stick. It's meant to go all over your lids and it kind of like doesn't sit as well as the matte eyeshadows. Now, matte eyeshadows are incredible, spectacular actually. It reminds me so much of the high-end eyeshadow sticks, uh, you know, but this was a downer for me. Now, let's go on with skincare. I've got a couple of skincare to end this video and the first one is Nykaa Go For Glow again, but this is another one. This is the Super Hydrate Face Mask and this I got from a few orders from Nykaa. They sent this for free. I don't know. It was like a consolation prize for giving me damaged goods I think uh, but <laughs> I'm like why are you sending me this it's like Nykaa knows this is not selling so it is like I give now nah, just give one free stuff to the person yeah let, let, let's make them happy happy new year merry christmas i didn't even like this as well though this is a little better than the other one this is supposed to be a hydrating mask it's got camellia uh, leaf extract and all and camellia extract is known to hydrate your uh, you know your skin and it's got some fatty alcohols also in this but in general i do not like anything that has got that you know metallic sheen uh, i don't like a peel off mask I just don't like a peel-off mask. For me, they perform the same way as a face sheet mask, okay? It's not at all environmental friendly because you're peeling it off and you're tossing it in the dustbin or you're washing it off. It's not good for the water and soil. Like this made my skin, it did strip away the moisture. It made my skin okay, uh, not the best, but after that, my skin was the same. I required a lotion. I required a moisturizer on top of that. So it defies the purpose, isn't it? So a big no to any of this. And I know for a fact that I will say this and tomorrow probably I'll buy something from Nykaa and they'll send me another tube of it, you know, and that will also come to the list. And then it'll be like an ongoing process. So expect that. Uh, the second one is the Earth Rhythm Coffee Seed Oil. And oh, I love the... 
I mean, when I opened the bottle itself, the fragrance, it was like having filter copy. Okay, that's how strong and potent it was. It didn't do much for me. It really didn't. Okay, because coffee is very, very good for your under eye. It was a bit too oily for my liking, but it didn't do anything for my skin. There was no luminosity, there was no, you know, that radiance uh, that usually happens with coffee oils or, you know, there was nothing that I noticed even in my under eye area. Though I don't have dark under eyes, but I do have darkness over here. I don't know. It's not something that I would say that it's like the best facial oil. It's something that is, if you want to sound fancy, like I'm using coffee oil on my face, then maybe it's the one for you, but I would say you can skip it. The second one is the Bubble Firm Antibacterial Face and Body Mask, okay? Like I said, I've got my list out here, so I'm not missing out on anything. Now again, antibacterial or not, it didn't do anything, okay? It was very, very difficult to work around with. It's got these little shards, okay? That is not very pleasant. Uh, probably would work well for the body, but I wouldn't mix it on my face for sure. I know it's got all these ingredients that make it sound like, oh my God, you know, it's definitely got this antibacterial property and I will never get skin infection, but, uh, Mm, no and bubble farm i do like some of their skincare their hair products are really nice but when it comes to their scrubs and masks uh, even in my last video they there were a few of their products that featured you know and um, i'm not a big fan and this is the sunita somani natural beauty coffee sp uh, scrub and this just dried out this within a week of opening it just dried up for me and i tried to mix it with oil and I tr it was a very messy affair there are a few body scrubs that i like that has got a lot of hydration it should pack in a hydration like if you saw my pure by priyanka i spoke about the body scrub from there i'm talking about the shea butter and coconut one oof incredible okay it gives you that hydration so even if you are facing winter and you want to exfoliate your body once you exfoliate and you wash it off you need you want to feel that sleek oiliness that emollient feel on your skin this did not give me that it was very harsh on the skin it was very very difficult to work around with so no a big no and the next one is <laughs> Mama Earth and this is the Upton face wash with turmeric and saffron. Okay, so when you apply this, okay, you, you get these little tiny granules, which I did not, so I don't know whether it's like a face scrub uh, plus face wash. You know, there was something very um, boring about this face wash. I think it only made it clean because I did a double cleanse, okay? If I didn't do a double cleanse and I went straight for it, it's not going to make my face squeaky clean. Second of all, it wasn't that hydrating for a saffron face wash. Mama Earth, like I said, there are some that just is there for the sake of being there. That's what Mama Earth is. It's not like the worst, you know, but it's just that this is where I think, you know, people have a problem with because you can repeat one very boring product, two, three, but when you repeat multiple boring products, that's when it gets to you. You know, you're like, why should I even care for the brand? When you see the performance of an Episoft cleanser, you know what to expect from a facial cleanser. You will automatically realize that, hell, this is what a facial cleanser should do, you know, and this just, it's just a face wash that's not the best, not the worst and it's just somewhere in between and it's going to remain that way. I hope that they really improve their products and you know they come up with something that will really take us by surprise. So these are my worst of beauty 2020 and I hope to see you in my next and until later. Bye for now.